Reynold, please give me a sign when you start live. I don't see us uh, live on Facebook yet. Reynolds, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Reynolds. Yes, I can hear you. We need to be live on Facebook before you broadcast on Zoom. Are we done? Mm. Let me broadcast us live on Facebook. Okay, please, we have to start now. Yeah, right now. Thanks. It's just loading. Mm -hmm. Okay, please make me co-host and let's start broadcasting. And mute your mic, please. It's We've started broadcasting. Okay. Maybe we should start, Aya, because it's already live? Yeah, it's live on Facebook. I'm waiting for the Zoom to broadcast. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we should start, Aya, because it's already live? Yeah, it's... Hello everyone, I hope you're safe and well. My name is Aya Shebi, I'm the African Union Youth Envoy. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to another uh, virtual African Union Youth consultation uh, as part of our series on COVID-19, okay. collective youth response. This is the seventh yes. webinar yes. and next week uh, will be the last yes. webinar. I think the, the interpretation is working. Um, but it needs okay, to be on the background. So Andre, could you please yes. uh, mute your mic so we can start? Okay, merci. Merci beaucoup. 
Um, so as I said, this is the seventh webinar and next week would be the last one of uh, a series of eight webinars. Uh, so keep an eye on, on the next one. Uh, you can use the Q&A tab for sending your questions. I know that we already received a couple of questions on the topic of today. Uh, we're also live on Facebook, uh, AU Youth Envoy Facebook page. So share with your friends who are not here on Zoom. Uh, and this time we are collaborating with the uh, legendary creatives in the production of this uh, webinar. They're behind the scenes. And we're also airing simultaneous uh, translation in French. I hope it's going to be uh, fixed and working for Francophone. Si vous êtes francophone, uh, s'il vous plaît, cliquez sur interprétation dans les options et sélectionnez uh, français. Uh, we will also be running uh, polls throughout the webinar, so please participate and make your voice heard on topic of today, which is really exciting, on digital divides and transformation. We're very grateful to have a very special guest for today, uh, Her Excellency Dr. Amina Abouzaid the African Union Commissioner on uh, Infrastructure and Energy. Thank you, Dr. Amani, for joining us. How are you doing uh, during this lockdown and pandemic and challenging <laughs> times? Um, uh, Aya and uh, dear friends, really delighted to be with uh, okay, you and to be with you also uh, on this uh, very important and uh, timely uh, topic and theme. Uh, I'm doing well, thank you, uh, given the circumstances. Uh, like everybody, I'm using the internet to, uh, to, uh, to run our business. And uh, I'm saying timely because uh, this crisis that we are living uh, gave us, uh, you know, a fantastic opportunity. Despite all the problems and the challenges it, it raised, uh, it became the biggest, the single biggest catalyst for a digital transformation, especially in Africa. And I think now we 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 rest our case. I mean until only a few months ago we were advocating for digital transformation now it's a reality and it's a reality that is going to continue because people's behavior ha has changed uh, customers behavior has changed uh, 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 and, and and now this is the new uh, the new reality that we need to uh, uh, harness and that we need to adapt to and to see to what extent it can uh, uh, support and help our purpose. And in the case of Africa, of course, is, is the development, our sustainable development. Absolutely, Commissioner. And as you said, I mean, in times of social distancing and, and government enforced lockdowns, it seems like digital technology has enabled us to continue our work, education, communication. But as you also know that millions of people in Africa are not able to connect to internet and the offline world is economically and socially isolating as well. And that's maybe what we call the digital divide. And just to give like a background stats, uh, the, by the end of 2019, Africa had an internet penetration rate of 39.3%, while Asia has 53.6%, Europe has 87.2%, and North America is the highest with 94.6%. So in your opinion, what are the major obstacles for bridging this digital divide in Africa? Uh, 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 thank you for this, uh, for the stats, but uh, the digital divide in Africa goes beyond coverage. Uh, the digital, uh, it's true, I mean, that almost only the third of the population is connected. The usage also level is low because the skills are low. The applications are not necessarily ones that we need. Uh, the, uh, 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 there is a difference between where you are. Uh, you will see that rural areas are uh, in, in, in countries that where the cities are uh, covered or connected to the internet, maybe rural areas are not. If you're in a Central Africa and not in peripherals of Africa, uh, uh, you also have a difficulty when it, when it comes to connection. So there's also a geographic divide. And on top of that, there's the affordability. Internet in Africa, there is 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 three to ten percent more exp uh, Sorry, three to ten times more mm. expensive in Africa than other parts of the world, and it's not reliable, and it's slow. Mm. So what we are talking about here is not just coverage, but broadband coverage, and skills development, and regulatory framework. 
And uh, it, it, that when we talk about digital transformation, and you noticed maybe uh, when we exchanged emails before the session, I never mentioned ICT because there's a misconception that uh, digitalization is a matter of ICT, which is no longer used. I mean, no one uses the term ICT. Digitalization is much wider and deeper, and everyone is concerned. Every sector is concerned. Every way of life is concerned. So it's not a matter of engineers putting cables. It's much bigger than that. Going back to your question about divide, that's exactly what we try to do, I mean, in, in, in Africa for years now. It's how to bridge the, 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 the digital uh, divide, including the gender divide, because there's also women and men, young and generational divide. You know, young people, uh, 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 versus uh, older people, even though, I mean, in Africa, the majority of the population is young, so you. So uh, 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 for us, what is more present is the gender one. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the African Union, we've had over the last uh, uh, two uh, years, many initiatives, you know, for ICT for girls, and girls can code, and girls this, so that's fine. Uh, also, we've had infrastructural programs for uh, uh, the connectivity. We've had uh, uh, the, the policies, you know, the harmonization of policies to create a single digital market to allow also interoperability, that we work together as one to support many of the uh, regional and the integration initiatives of the, uh, of the African Union. However, you will find that the, 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 the success stories in Africa are anecdotal, are sporadic. This country is doing very well in that. This country has an excellent incubator. That country, oh, the speed is very high. But there is no common story for Africa. There is no common story for Africa. That is why oh, last year, we, uh, uh, we held a series of uh, meetings and consultations, and we gathered to, uh, uh, all the stakeholders and financial institutions and everybody, because we wanted a, a digital transformation, not transition digital transformation in Africa for Africa to have one common story to go together but in different paths because we are not uh, all, not all countries are at the same level in, in, in so many things but to have one common story we, we want Africa to make the jump into a digital transformation because for us in Africa digital provides solutions uh, innovative solutions in, in, in for our development needs. It, it's not the same thing as other parts of the world. So I'm, I'm not going to compare, you said Asia, Europe, no, no. And actually, Africa is much more, for instance, developed uh, when it comes to uh, uh, digital money or uh, uh, digital transactions, uh, mobile money than other parts of the world. And PESA. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but again, we, we want this to be across the board. And when we kept, you know, saying, oh, digital payments, digital payments came a time today. Those who are made you know, to, to make the simplest transaction in a lockdown or to make the simplest order. That's what, what we do from groceries to education. So if you buy vegetables, it's uh, as uh, or you you want to get your degree, uh, university degree, you use digital. Mm. You use digital. So it's not a matter; it's a way of life now, and we have to put it in our heads and that this is it. Even at the African Union, within the African Union, even yesterday in our meeting, I said, no, no, this is not something that's going to end when COVID nineteen crisis, you know. Uh, words of this is a new reality so prepare for this because this is how we could and should recover mm. so it's also a matter of resilience yeah absolutely and during even this crisis you know uh, those uh, those who have you know good coverage and have uh, uh, the people you know savvy when it comes to user applications mm -hmm. and many of our countries are doing that Ghana, Senegal, Egypt and everywhere in Tunisia uh, uh, it helped a lot in the tracking and the tracing of the uh, affected people. Uh, it, it, it is a, a, an incredible tool for, uh, for alerts. Now we live, you know, next to our uh, digital uh, tools to, to know what's happening, where to go, what not to go, what to do, and not to do. 
-hmm. So uh, it, 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 the divide in Africa, to go back to your question, is much bigger than just the question of uh, coverage. And we have to acknowledge that. And yes, we are doing everything, especially when it comes it came to the strategy, uh, the African strategy for digital transformation, it addresses all of that. Mm -hmm. It addresses the issue of infrastructure, the issue of skills, of applications in each sector, and which sectors are priority for, uh, for Africa of uh, SMEs and the, you know, and the, and the uh, uh, conducive environment for e-startups uh, to, uh, uh, to operate. Yeah, and, and to, follow up, uh, to follow up Sorry. on that, actually, Commissioner, uh, many young people may not know, actually, there is a whole department called Department of Infrastructure and Energy that you are wonderfully uh, leading, uh, and under which maybe sits also the Information Society Division, which is uh, uh, also tackling this issue. So maybe you can explain to young people more, what is the African Union doing? What is the African digital uh, transformation strategy? It was adopted recently in February. Uh, and yes, the exactly. other instruments advocating for inter-Africa connectivity and Agenda 2016. So for all the young people watching us who, who don't know that we have a strategy actually at the EU level and we have a department with different programs uh, tackling this. Yes, but uh, as, as I just said, we have been tackling the issues uh, related to uh, then it was called ICT or connectivity or skills for several years. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, since last year, we wanted one approach that uh, cross cutting. So uh, it is, it's true that it is the department that uh, I'm heading that is uh, spearheading this uh, effort. But it's everybody is, in, in, is involved because the pillars uh, have one about the policies and regulatory frameworks. One about uh, the skills, one about the connectivity, but there's also the sectors like e-health, e-education, e-payments, the financial system uh, under uh, uh, in, in the era of uh, uh, digitalization, the digital ID, which is very important for transactions, and that's what supports, you know, the uh, also the African Union initiative for uh, a free trade area, e-commerce because again this is how people you know trade and should be trading across the continent and so on so it, 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 a strategy became uh, it is like the master plan for the whole uh, continent to move forward and as much as uh, 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 I, I would have loved to say to take the credit and say oh it's uh, the, uh, our department but what I'm saying that it is yes we let the exercise but it's everybody everybody's input and contribution and everybody's also is responsible for its implementation because again it's not a matter of this department or that department we work with everybody and we work with IFIs like we work with our colleagues in the trade like with our colleagues in health or the education and uh, 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 and again I mean this this has proven to be a collective uh, or participatory effort and the young people also, uh, your team has participated in, in the elaboration of this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it supports mm -hmm. all the other, you know, initiatives uh, of Agenda 2063. Yeah. And as you mentioned, so e-commerce, e-citizenship, uh, you know, increasing maybe also with CFTA now, increasing the activity and trade and entrepreneurial activity between countries but also citizen engagement, e-governance, uh, digital economy, digital government, artificial intelligence, blockchain, all of these we want to see in Africa. Young people I, are angry for all of these. So what's your vision for that? How do you think Africa will achieve that and how long it will take us to, to arrive there? You know, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm, 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 everyone knows, I'm not one of those pessimistic people at all. Our young people have been doing fantastic things despite all the challenges I just mentioned. I mean, we mentioned, we talked about the divide earlier. We talked about the high price, the lack of connectivity, the unreliable connections, also due to unreliable energy sources. And let's not forget that energy is at the source of digitalization. And despite all of this, our young people have doing wonderful things. Uh, however, we do not want uh, we do not want it to be just uh, uh, individual efforts. It, it has to be the norm. Uh, uh, it, it differs from one country to another, how much your system is deep, how much uh, uh, your uh, uh, policies uh, uh, are rooted. So it takes maybe more effort 
uh, uh, in countries where you know the systems are very uh, well established. You know, I know it's 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 contradictory, but where uh, uh, say banking, where you have a banking system that is solid and functioning, digitalization is not happening at the same speed in uh, like a place where you don't have a bank. Uh, uh, because again, uh, uh, people found a way to transact uh, uh, financially through a, a, a digital mean uh, because of the uh, fact that they are either they are not bankable or there is no bank to start with or the banking system is not uh, uh, as solid as, as we can. So, uh, that we, we made an estimation together with the World Bank uh, because we worked with them also to, uh, to, uh, for this exercise about how much does it cost and how long does it take. Uh, uh, the estimate is that it costs about $100 billion, $100 billion for Africa to achieve a digital transformation across uh, the board in all sectors. Uh, uh, and the estimate is that in time, uh, it happened that it would happen by 2030, or that's our turn. Mm -hmm. I believe that we can do it early. I, I know it's, a, it's, it's challenging, but I believe we can do it early because this crisis now has speeded up, expedited things and speeded up things beyond our imagination. Now, e education, talk about e education. In, in my own country, I'm from Egypt, in my own country. Last year, they started, you know, e-education. It was uh, shy, people uh, criticized. Came this year, came the crisis. Not one voice, not one criticizing and saying, what is it that you are doing to it? Not one. And now they are discussing what in the new reality. Maybe we should have like a half, half time, like two days uh, uh, presence, uh, actual physical presence in school and the rest of the week at home. It, it, that's, so here, here you are, a whole sector that we thought would take years to be digitalized. Yeah. Now, behavioral uh, change. Uh, yeah. Practically all universities across the continent are delivering their courses uh, online. Mm. And in 2021, not only for this year, and 2021. Mm. So, my, okay, the plan says 2030. But I hope, We're and moving I, I, I'll keep the hope, <laughs> that we do it early. Yeah. And it's thanks to you. So We're keep moving. pushing with me, because we want it to happen earlier. It should happen earlier, despite all the challenges. Absolutely, absolutely, Commissioner. And I want to bring in a youth voice here, uh, Kevin from Kenya, who would like to share with us his experience on the topic, but also his question for Commissioner. Kevin, the floor is yours. I, I see lots of uh, messages on chat, so I'm sorry, I will have to go through them uh, later. Please go yeah, ahead, Kevin. Yeah, no worries. We're picking up questions from the chat, and we can send you uh, later on also a report on the Please, questions. please, yes. So, so, Kevin, you have the floor. Go ahead. Okay, first of all, let me thank you for, for inviting me to be one of the panelists today. And before we criticize Africa or we say where Africa is, it is okay that whatever the good doctor has said that, that we cannot compare the milestone, the, 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 the milestone Kenya ha, or the milestone the Africa has come as a, as a continent as in compared to the other countries that, that, like the Europe and Asia. We know our situation and we know what is happening on the ground. For instance, when you come to areas like the remote areas, for instance, in Kenya, in Nairobi, is the place that you can, it is almost the only place that you can get the good internet connectivity. But when you go to some other remote areas, you will come to realize that it is, the situation is very different. And also, when we come to things like the ICT infrastructure, it is not well endowed Africa. And when you talk about things like the, we are currently rolling out, ro rolling out the 5G internet connectivity, but to, some, to our dismay, you will come to realize that it is not that much developed. We are trying as much as possible to, to go to, to, we are striving as much as possible as Africans to make, make ourselves, to, to be mapped somewhere when it comes to the global map. 
when you look at a country or a place like the computer village in ikj in a sub in which is a sub a suburb of lagos in nigeria we'll come to realize it is one of the biggest computer markets and that is where you can get the best smartphones and what have you so it is very very important for us to realize however as i as, as i say that you've come very far as africans it is also important to make sure or to know that there are some of the things that you need to do as africans one we want i, I want us to to look at it on the on terms of, on policies and i could add it is like one of my recommendation that the african union should come and solve some of the issues that we encounter as africans now at the continental level for instance when you look at countries like libya countries like malawi south sudan the, not south sudan but sudan itself uganda when they have the political or when they are in their campaign mood or during elections they have what we call the internet shutdowns which now bars the people the population from now accessing the information which might be very vital that's kind of some extent i can call it dictatorship or something of the sort so i would urge if the au can intervene on that level so that at least as we strive to install the ICT infrastructure and the internet connectivity, it should go in tandem with what is happening on the ground. Again, when you look uh, at- uh, Kevin, can you be very, because we need to listen to more people. So I would urge you please to be more focused and so, so we can uh, wrap up and then address your point and then uh, listen to more people. It's, it's okay, it's okay. Another yeah. thing is the, I don't, I don't know what the, the African Union has as far as the fake news is concerned. Because as now far, as far as what, sorry? The fake news is concerned. Fake, fake news. news. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Because now countries, people are coming out with all sorts of information that is not, uh, that is not even, it, it is not even authenticated. Again, I would also want to address the issues of the speed of internet. And I don't know, some countries like Uganda, some countries like Sudan, they are landlocked and therefore they don't have the, the, the continental fiber. I don't know, and the terrestrial, the terrestrial connectivity, it's not that much reliable. I don't know what is in the bag of the AU for us to remedy that one. So those are my... Thank you very much, uh, Kevin. So I think, I, th I think what, I, what I take, uh, especially the important question on the internet shutdown or, or censorship in some countries and how do we tackle that as the AU, I think you addressed on the speed of the internet and the access question, uh, but also the fake news. How do we you know, use those? No, let me, yeah, because he raised, I think Kevin raised a very important points. And uh, yes, true. I mean, I, I did agree and I do agree. I did talk to the points regarding the divides and the importance of broadband and high speed uh, uh, internet. And I did also talk about the policies and regulatory frameworks for, uh, for I mean, nationally, but also uh, regionally across the continent. But the two points uh, that you uh, mentioned here, Kevin, that I did not address indeed, uh, uh, is the one, the point regarding the cybersecurity and the new term of infodemics uh, or the, 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 the pandemic of information, the, of fa fake news, especially at this time, and uh, the issue of uh, shutdown. Now, uh, uh, the, uh, the African Union has uh, a convention on cybersecurity and personal data protection. And we, we keep advocating for this convention because it also provides one framework for the continent on what is, what is not acceptable. And this allows us to transact and to talk to each other. And that's the purpose at the end of the day. You want the same policy uh, uh, for cybersecurity or protection. And that's very important in the digital era that we protect our data. Uh, uh, you, you want the same policy across the continent. Now, how many countries have signed uh, this convention? Not more than five, from 55 countries. And uh, we keep uh, 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 making you know, workshops for awareness, for advocacy, for this and that. Two or three years ago, the European Union came up with a policy on uh, 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 cybersecurity and personal data protection. All African countries signed it. And, and I'm, 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 I'm still mad at this. 
and, and we keep saying, please, as we go into digitalization, the issue of data protection and cybersecurity is as important. You cannot just go into a street and drive. You have to have code de la route. You have to have, you know, the, the, uh, the, the traffic rules. And you need to abide by those rules. You cannot just go and jump in, the, in a car and then start, you know, uh, uh, going on your own. Okay? So the, 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 uh, now that the continent, you know, all of us, the continent and the globe, has suddenly got, got, uh, got into the digital uh, space because of uh, the crisis, uh, there is even an added aspect that we were, we're starting to address is the issue of cybersecurity, especially for children, children online. Children are almost now 24 hours seven online for education and for entertainment and games and whatever, for education as well. I'm sure you heard about, you know, how uh, uh, the videos were bombarded with pornographic content and, uh, you know, uh, many other, you know, uh, aspects. So now we are also looking more and more on uh, 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 to the issue of uh, uh, cybersecurity or security of children online. And we should be very careful uh, about that. And, and, and as we speak, because we had a ministerial meeting, African ministerial meeting uh, 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 around all the issues related to the crisis for uh, digitalization. And one of the aspects we insisted on uh, the issue of children uh, security online. Uh, not just cybersecurity, but specifically for this category, children. Now, in the same vein, uh, uh, infodemics, because it's also uh, uh, one way, uh, another threat, or uh, the fake news. I mean, fake news, but uh, now these fake news could be lethal because they give bad or misinformation about a, a, a pandemic. So it becomes even uh, uh, much more dangerous. It's not just about uh, who went where. No, no. Now it's uh, it, it's a matter of life and death. Uh, uh, so this is another area that we now that we also uh, are concentrating on together, and we got the green light from our uh, uh, ministers to 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 work on that. The other aspect you spoke about about shutdowns, uh, uh, shutdowns for political purposes, not shutdowns because of technical problems. Shutdowns because of a political for political purposes. Uh, over the last two years, uh, we have been working with the Peace and Security Department of the African Union uh, and also the, the, uh, the representatives of, of our countries, uh, the permanent representatives of African countries, to highlight, uh, uh, to highlight the issue of cybersecurity, but also the issue of the rights. Uh, there are new rights. Uh, in the digital era, there are new rights as well. Uh, uh, and one of the, the, the right is, is the right to information. So to, for, for the African Union to revise also the aspect of rights, the right to information is a right. You cannot just shut, the, the, shut down the, the internet. And also there are, uh, this is an example, but there are other rights, like an individual right, for instance, the right to delete yourself. Uh, you, no one should hold data just because you signed into Facebook and, and keep it in, and, and use it and so many other things. But we, 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 we are leading also on an exercise to sensitize our countries on the new rights and, on, uh, 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 and uh, of citizens, but also of governments towards the citizens uh, in this digital era. I know that it's... Um, uh, uh, until now, you know, things were, uh, it's relatively new in, in Africa, but uh, it, it has to be understood that, and it is, I think, now more than ever understood that internet is a way of life. It's no longer uh, a value addition. No, no, it's a necessity. Mm. It's a necessity. So I do agree with you, and we are doing work uh, on that as well. Yeah, and, and just but, uh, on the issue of 5G, uh, yeah, we address that. Before. Yeah, uh, just to add that in some countries it's even constitutional. I know in Tunisia the access to information is, is a constitutional right. Um, so I want to bring to the conversation, uh, Mr. Uh, no, yes, but I'm not talking about any access to information. Like, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm saying here digi uh, access to information digitally. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. So digital access is information. Yeah. Yes, yeah, digital yeah. access, yeah, 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 that's what I mean. Uh, so I'm gonna bring to the conversation Mr. John Jack from the Organization for uh, Economic Cooperation and Development. I know that OECD has a, also a focus on uh, digital transformation. So I'll give you the floor yes. for a three minute intervention, uh, Mr. John Jack. Thank you all very much. Thank you for this opportunity. And I would like to also to thank uh, Her Excellency Dr. Abuzaid for a very interesting intervention. Um, so I am a policy analyst uh, in the MENA OECD governance program, which is a strategic partnership between MENA and OECD countries to share knowledge and expertise with a view of disseminating standards and principles of good governance. Um, as part of the Youth Empowerment Initiative, we look at how public institutions work, laws and policies that are designed, and policy-making processes are structured to achieve policy outcomes that are responsive to today's youth and to future generations. Moreover, our program has been supporting governments from the MENA region in adopting a youth lens across the administration to better understand young person's needs. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the OECD launched an online survey targeting youth organizations worldwide uh, for three uh, purposes, to understand their concerns uh, in the here and now and longer run, uh, also to compile evidence on how youth and their organizations have helped to mitigate the crisis, and finally to, meet, to compile lessons learned from governments and public administrations to anticipate future shocks and build trust for recovering and, and building resilience. Uh, the OECD received more than 90 responses from 40 countries worldwide, including nine based in the MENA region. And the results of this survey will fit into a policy paper, which will soon be published uh, and will be features in, uh, featured in the OECD COVID-19 hub. Uh, um, the preliminary findings notably showcase that a majority of surveyed youth-led organizations has created online campaigns to keep young members informed on the measures to protect themselves and others. And more than every second organization has turned to digital and online tools to provide practical advice to young people on how to deal with mental and physical health, stigma and discrimination. Um, to give you an example, uh, youth organizations in the Middle East and North Africa region have used digital tools to engage young people in dialogue sessions and in skilling up youth during confinement. Uh, for instance, the Youth and Smart Confinement Initiative in Morocco has organized regular webinars on social media to discuss topics such as art and confinement and what mm -hmm. are the best users of digital tools to keep youth socially engaged. Um, in Tunisia, the International Organization for Youth Development has organized an online course uh, for young people to acquire entrepreneurial skills from home. Um, however, the findings also show that in countries with a significant digital divide in connectivity and access to electronic devices persists, the crisis risks to further amplify existing inequalities among young people. Uh, for instance, students from less well-off families are less likely to have access to digital learning resources and parental support from home learning. Across OECD countries, more than one in 10 15-year-olds from socioeconomically disadvantaged households do not have a quiet space to study at home nor an internet connection. And, on, and one in five do not have access to a computer for schoolwork, highlighting the particular challenges for young people without digital means. In this context, the digitalization of educational programs and investments in the digital skills of young people are also key concerns that were highlighted by the surveyed youth organizations and that will need to be addressed by governments. Uh, finally, I would like to add that the OECD is currently finalizing a global report on the topic of youth empowerment and intergenerational justice from a public governance perspective, where the issue of digital divide and transformation will also be addressed in this perspective. Uh, the report will draw on the survey findings from more than 40 countries and more than 85 youth organizations and will provide the first international comparative analysis in this field. Thank you um, very much. I would like to thank you very much and I'm of course pleased to share these documents once they are ready. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Jack. I will just uh, hand over to Commissioner to interact. I know OECD is an important partner to Africa, so yeah. Commissioner, your reaction. No, uh, thank you very much, uh, Jean-Jacques, for this, uh, for the for your presentation, but also for the for the work that OECD is doing, I had the pleasure of uh, of uh, uh, meeting with the head of OECD and uh, uh, the head of UNESCO, and we, we were uh, consulting over the AI specifically, uh, artificial intelligence, and 
I gave the uh, p p perspective from uh, Africa side, but I, I think what what you what you just said is uh, kind of exemplified uh, or show has shown you know a, a concrete examples of what what we said earlier that this crisis has given ways of things that maybe in normal times we wouldn't have seen or uh, uh, we wouldn't have seen as much so um, i'm really happy to see that the young people are uh, 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 using those times also uh, constructively uh, uh, to uh, uh, to support uh, uh, the the population in, in the in, in these difficult times but also in in, 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 in a way, in paving the, paving the way for a, a, a better recovery or an accelerated recovery and, uh, and resilience. So uh, thank you very much, Jean-Jacques. Thank you, Jean-Jacques. Uh, and thank you, Commissioner, for interacting with that. So I want to ask a question that came up really a lot on the webinar. And uh, you also addressed it at the beginning, with, which is the gender digital divide. So yes. show that uh, boys are 1.5 times more likely to own a phone mm -hmm. than girls in low and middle income countries, and then 1.8 times more likely to own a smartphone, which means they have access to internet. Mm -hmm. So what, what is the EU doing about that, uh, about women and girls especially who are out of the digital revolution? No, we, we do have a program particularly for girls uh, literacy uh, that we are doing with the, uh, with the United Nations uh, uh, Telecommunication Union. Uh, so that, that is one specifically designed uh, for girls. We also work uh, on this uh, the, the issue of digital divide with Smart Africa. It's a continental uh, initiative again uh, on digitalization. Uh, but I just want to say something, uh, maybe off, off track a little bit. The issue of gender divide when it comes to digitalization cannot be disassociated from the gender divide in general in Africa. So we, I cannot just sing it out digitalization and say, oh, uh, boys are, are preferred to girls when it comes to digital. The, the, the issue is across the board. The issue that is across the board. It's true that we are addressing it, you know, uh, uh, with uh, various skills uh, uh, and empowerment, but, but also we have to recognize that it, it is Gender discrimination has to be addressed across the board and not just as a one set. That said, even that, even that, apart from the initiative, because I'm also keen uh, uh, on seeing women, not just the ones with the skills, you know, just for the coding or the application, but I also want to see them as business women, business women in, 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 in the various aspects of infrastructure and digitalization is one of them. So we established a network. Uh, 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 women in infrastructure, uh, uh, whether uh, whether they work in infrastructure or they are business owners, and we want to give them visibility. We want to show them. So one of one of the ways also of of of, do, of addressing the issue is to showcase those who have done it, those who can do it, those who are there. But if when we talk about entrepreneurs in any field, especially in infrastructure, and maybe I'll talk about infrastructure here because it's, uh, I'm. I'm I'm in charge of the whole thing. Uh, 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 you know, men, uh, they are always there and then, but when you look closer and when you, well, well, that's what we, we did and we are still doing, you find lots of women doing wonderful things. Give them visibility, show them, you know, in, let them sit in front, just that. Invite them to the conferences you go to, just that. So uh, we, we are tackling the issue in, in, in technically, as, as, uh, as you know, uh, uh, digital literacy, but also the African Union and all uh, uh, and many other organizations and, and our governments are addressing the issue of gender discrimination at large because it cannot be disassociated from that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, I think it's, as you said, part of the gender equality agenda in general. Uh, there is a question from Nicholas from Uganda asking if the African Union working with the African Development Bank especially to empower grassroots technology startups in rural communities uh, uh, in terms of digitalization? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, and I myself, I was in the African Development Bank before I, I was elected to this position. Yes, we're very closely. And uh, in, the, in the vision that we prepared prior to the digital transformation strategy, we did that also with the World Bank and the European Union. But, but I would like people to remember something 
that Africa has a many, uh, we, have, we have several bodies across the continent. So the African Union is the political uh, body of the African of the uh, of the of Africa, and we are mainly concentrating in you know putting the strategies, the policies, the empowerment, the, the partnerships, and then we have the economic arm, uh, which is the African Development Bank, and we have also an executing agency which is a UNEPAD, and all of us are involved in all exercises, but we have different ro 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 roles when it comes to. Uh, implementation. Uh, each one has, has uh, a role. And having said that, you mentioned African Development Bank, when it comes to digitalization, the issue is far more than just IFIs or the African Union. We are engaged in the private sector. Remember earlier when I said the vision is to, uh, for, a, for, a, for a digitalized Africa uh, by 2030, and I, I did put the price tag of $100 billion. This is not a, a matter of one act or just governments, or one bank, or five banks. It's everybody's business. And we want the private sector particularly to, to be part and parcel of, this, uh, of these initiatives because they are the ones who can also uh, encourage uh, uh, innovation and bring in new ideas and, 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 and promote and, and give up, you know, the, the, and give different innovative solutions. We want to promote that. Mm. Absolutely. And so I, at the time is passing really fast with you, Commissioner, and I really want to <laughs> touch on all the aspects because young people are asking many yeah. questions. But before we um, end with your call to action, I will ask you to, to spend time on call to action and, and your commitment. I want to, because I know we, we talked about this before the webinar, because you're also in charge of energy, and that's an important topic. So maybe uh, you can take a few minutes to preempt uh, why we should engage in that topic and I I invite you again for for, for the energy uh, discussion. So just uh, before we end, uh, you can share with us what is happening, uh, uh, especially in COVID-19 time. How do we ensure that energy recovery? Yes, I want... Commissioner, uh, we lost so you. Don't have Commissioner, actually, you can uh, just... So energy, well, repeat again, yes. more than half of the population of Africa does not have access to energy, to electricity. More than half, 51%. So if you don't have access to electricity, you don't have access to digital. So forget about digital, by the way. Okay? So let, let us just establish that one. Especially in the times of the coronavirus. Two-thirds, more than two-thirds, only 28% only 28% of health facilities in Africa have, re, uh, have reliable sources of energy. Only uh, uh, one third or two thirds of the schools have, even though we don't need schools uh, physically uh, anymore with digitalization, have reliable sources of energy. How are you supposed to, to run a health facility or pump water you know, needed for the coronavirus you know, if you don't have energy? How are you supposed to do that? How are you supposed to digitalize if you don't have energy? And earlier, Kevin asked about shutdowns. There's also the issue of data centers that we are having, about the connectivity. If you don't have electricity and electricity is not reliable, then your network is not reliable. And I can give me any sector. At the, it, the basis is energy. If you don't have energy, forget about the sector working for, uh, effectively. So energy is a big topic. It's a huge topic. And when we talk digital, we have to keep in mind energy. Mm -hmm. Do we have energy also everywhere? Is it reliable? What can we do about it then to make it reliable so that our networks become also more reliable? Mm, absolutely. This is a, a great uh, attraction to our next webinar on energy. There is a lot to discuss <laughs> out there. So I want to close uh, with your call to action, Commissioner. Uh, what, what is your call to action to we had about 200 people on Zoom and about 1,000 on the Facebook Live. What do you say to young people in terms of digitalization? And what's your one commitment as the Commissioner of Infrastructure and Energy? I, I, I'm saying that this is your time. This More than ever, this is your time. And you have a fantastic tool. And you, and you have all the support. Even if in the past the support was, you know, uh, not that strong, now you have all the support. Please go and do it. I don't believe in challenges. I believe in challenges that we can overcome, and I'm sure we can overcome. I'm sure. And 
uh, African youth have always been coming up with fantastic solutions, you know, for energy through digital in, in refugee camps, for literacy, you know, in, 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 in uh, uh, digital literacy in, in uh, nomad uh, uh, societies, uh, for, you know, uh, uh, practical solutions uh, for uh, women in rural areas. Keep doing that. But what I'm saying to you is that my commitment to you is that I will keep a, a, a digitalization, and that's actually what I told the team, the, our policy makers, everyone knows. My commitment is to digitalization energy, because these are the two conditions sine qua non. We cannot aspire to have development in any sector, in any sector. And this is the time we have to harness and grasp this opportunity, use it right, and I'm sure we can do it before 2030. <laughs> Absolutely, with your leadership, <laughs> I am sure too. Thank you very much. I had the honor today to host our very special guest, the AU Commissioner of Infrastructure and Energy, Her Excellency Dr. Amina Abouzaid. And I know from Amen. with you, Commissioner, that you are a champion of the youth agenda. You make sure in every panel and every event that you have youth participation. So I am a witness of that. I had the pleasure and the honor to work with you the past uh, year during my mandate. Thank you so, so much for Thank having you. this time with us. We're very grateful for that. Thank you, Aya. It's been a pleasure and a privilege. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. And please send me all the Q&A or the information to be sent. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So um, just to uh, wrap up and conclude uh, before we, we end uh, the webinar, um, I think Commissioner provided us with an extremely informative session and, and a way forward on our digital transformation on the continent. Uh, my takeaway that uh, we need to, to achieve this through a multi-stakeholder approach uh, between African government, tech, corporate sector, she mentioned the private sector, the African Union, uh, developing partner who need to work together to prioritize investment in our tech infrastructure. Uh, I also think it's important that we end this internet shutdowns in our countries. Internet should be a basic human right, not a privilege, and access to it and uh, respect of its uh, access by our government is necessary. Um, I think also we should bridge the digital divide along multiple dimensions, including income, age, geography, and, and gender. We had two polls running throughout the webinar. There is, a, a, I think, a, a poll that just, uh, just is just running. So please do participate if you haven't. And I just make uh, three quick announcements. Uh, one is on Saudi blog. Uh, the application is still open till 7th of June. We extended the deadline, uh, so please share with your sisters uh, uh, from the continent and diaspora between 20 and 35 years old uh, to submit in French, English, or Arabic. The second uh, announcement is regarding the COVID-19, Africa COVID-19 Response Fund. The campaign is still on. We launched the campaign during Africa Day on uh, the African concert, Solidarity Concert on COVID-19, but it's still on, so please, find out more from a youth and voice social media and uh, share. And then last, uh, next week is the last webinar of this series of eight webinars with African Union decision makers. We had very um, clear objectives that we wanted to achieve through this series to bring you closer to the African Union, to make a, a platform or nurture or create a platform for you to drive conversations from youth collective response and to enable you with the information as young people and inspire calls to action, but also secure commitments from our decision makers that have been challenged by you during this series. So we hope we've been able to achieve these objectives. Now we're moving to a new phase of deconfinement from the confinement phase, and we will also move to create conversation relevant to that. So you will hear more updates on the A-Youth Envoy platforms on what's next. Uh, next week will be two hours. Uh, uh, it's not just one hour. We have a lineup of speakers, not only one guest, a lot of African and global leaders. It, it's going to be um, really exciting and really interesting. So don't uh, miss that. Book your time now, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Addis Ababa time next Wednesday. 
we come to the end of our webinar. Thank you all for joining. Uh, keep on um, tweeting us on the hashtag Africa Youth Leads and also continue to comment on the live Facebook. Thanks for everyone who joined on Facebook Live. We will continue the conversation and see you next Wednesday. Bye.